How did they manage to create a rocket at home? First of all, they used some common household ingredients such as sugar and potassium nitrate, which can be easily obtained as a fertilizer. Then they start by melting the sugar, mix in the fertilizer, and pour the resulting mixture into a mold to form a properly sized propellant slug. This propellant is subsequently placed into a round tube, which serves as the rocket's body, typically made from locally available water pipes. You might wonder why sugar is included in the mix. Sugar contains a substantial amount of energy, but it releases this energy slowly when it burns, and the fertilizer serves as an oxidizing agent supplying oxygen. This allows for a much quicker release of energy. When the right proportions are used, it burns fast enough to propel a rocket, yet not so quickly as to cause an explosion. Here is a super simplified version. Your first ingredient is sugar. Then melt it with the oxidizing agent, fertilizer, and mix together to form a slug, which is used as a propellant to power the rocket. Rockets are launched from a simple steel frame for quick deployment and easy removal. And a wire connected to a battery ignites the rocket's solid fuel propellant, which burns for a short time, propelling the rocket upwards. After the burn, the rocket follows a predictable parabolic trajectory and impacts the ground at a consistent distance from the launch point. We will also be looking at the parts and functions of this homemade rocket and the dangers associated with it, as it sometimes falls back into hummus territory. All in the videos ahead, so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. But what is the difference between a rocket and a missile? A rocket's direction is determined by the amount of available propellant and the elevation of the rocket launcher. It operates as a fire and forget, similar to artillery rounds fired from various systems. In contrast, a missile is equipped with a guidance system that allows its trajectory and impact point to be adjusted during its flight. Just like the Patriot missile shown in our recent video, it includes a guidance section, sensors, and fins that can rotate or track a target to aim and destroy. This is the Kassam rocket. It measures approximately 2.2 meters in length, has a diameter of 17 centimeters, and weighs 90 kilograms, which is equivalent to approximately 198 pounds. In addition to its weight and size, the Kassam rocket is equipped with a payload of 10 kilograms, consisting of high explosives. This payload allows the rocket to be a potent weapon. To offer some perspective and aid in understanding its dimensions, let's consider a size comparison with a human being. As you can see, when compared to a person, the rocket is not excessively large. Furthermore, we have the Patriot air defense missile, a recurring feature in our recent videos, and the Russian formidable S-400 air defense missile system. Just beside it is the Iron Dome interceptor missiles. And finally, we have the Iranian Smirch rockets, which have a range of 50 to 70 miles. At the rocket's rear, you'll find multiple nozzles responsible for expelling exhaust gases. Right above the nozzles, there are these fins whose primary purpose is to stabilize the rocket during its flight, ensuring it follows a precise parabolic trajectory. Moving on to the central section, we encounter the propellant charge. This component is essentially a mixture of sugar and potassium nitrate, serving as the rocket's fuel source. Just above the solid fuel rocket, we find the shrapnel or ball bearings, which play a crucial role in the rocket's destructive capabilities. Within the warhead of the Kassam rocket lies a combination of urea nitrate and smuggled TNT, bolstered by additional shrapnel for maximum impact upon detonation. Now let's focus on the fuse, a critical part of the rocket's design. It's a simple yet effective device consisting of an empty small arms cartridge filled with an explosive booster material. This material is set in motion by a spring-loaded nail, creating the mechanism that triggers the rocket's explosive payload. Let's take a look at the step-by-step -step process of how this is launched. Step 1. Rockets are launched from a simple steel frame that can be quickly deployed and easily removed. Step 2. Aligning the launcher with the desired target visually and adjusting the launch angle to control the range. This can enhance their accuracy using information obtained from commercial drones available in the markets, but it's all based on estimations regarding the designated targets. Step 3. A wire connected to a battery is affixed to the base of the rocket. When ready, it ignites the solid fuel propellant composed of sugar and potassium nitrate, a mixture that can be derived from agricultural fertilizer. Step 4. Interestingly, the propellant burns for around just only 1 to 5 seconds, powering the rocket upward at an angle. After the burn ceases, the rocket follows a parabolic path under the influence of gravity. 
It will impact the ground at a predictable distance from its launch point, assuming a roughly standard energy input from the propellant mixture and a consistent launch angle. Step 5. As mentioned, it uses a hollowed magazine trigger to detonate the rockets. When it follows a parabolic path, it descends head-on and activates the trigger fuse. Step 6. The fuse sets off the warhead, a mixture of urea and TNT, creating an explosion and dispersing shrapnel. But it does have its pros and cons. First of all, it has its low cost and accessibility. Kassim rockets are relatively low-cost weapons, making them easily accessible for militants groups with limited resources. While it disadvantages is the most dangerous. The problem is these rockets sometimes fall back into friendly territory. This happens because Kassim rockets are unguided and notoriously inaccurate. They lack precision guidance systems and their trajectory can be influenced by various factors such as wind, resulting in frequent misses of their intended targets. This inaccuracy can lead to unintended civilian casualties and property damage. The Hamas missile Qasim costs a mere $300 to $600, whereas the Iranian rocket costs approximately $1,000. In comparison, the Iron Dome interceptor missile is significantly more expensive, with a cost of $50,000 each. Additionally, each battery in the Iron Dome system carries a price tag of approximately $150 million. However, the Iron Dome boasts a reported 90% success rate as reported. Let's take a look at how Qasim rockets are intercepted by the Iron Dome air defense system. Firstly, the radar system detects and tracks the potential threat within a radius of 100 kilometers. Subsequently, the data is conveyed from the radar to the battle management control system, and from there, it is relayed to the launcher. The launcher, in turn, transmits the information to the interceptor. The system is tasked with assessing the likely impact locations of the threat and then selectively engages only those rockets projected to fall within the safeguarded area, thus requiring interception. Upon determination of the impending threat, an interceptor missile is launched with the aim of neutralizing the incoming rocket before it reaches its projected impact zone. The interceptor missile employs its electro-optical sensor to monitor and target the incoming rockets, striving to approach the threat as closely as possible. Upon achieving the designated target, the missile activates its advanced sensors and laser system. This activation initiates the proximity fuse warhead, preloaded with fragmentation rounds, which detonates within a range of just 8 to 10 meters from the target, thereby ensuring maximum damage upon impact. We make original 3D animation videos just like this Abrams tanks. How to drive and fire the Russian T-90 tank and the latest video the AC-130 gunship and blender software. Support us by subscribing and hitting the bell icons for more engineering videos to come.